Hello everyone and welcome back. In today's off air setup, we're using a classical PvP build that has now been updated to feel more welcoming and rewarding to use in PvE now. Chromatic Fire has always been an off meta exotic that we use if you wanted to mess around with it in PvP, but with recent changes to it, it can now be useful in PvE content even more thanks to its subclass special trait effects. This here is something I'm going to explore more over time. But for now, we have Stasis version that uses Ace of Spades Firefly effect with Stasis Slow to create a lethal no man land setup. This is an amazing build to use if you're an ad clearer and you really want to put your name out there. To start, you're going to want to have Ice Flare Bolts where Shattering, a frozen target, spawns Seekers that track and freezes nearby targets. Then you'll want Bleak Watchers where you'll be able to convert Grenade into a Stasis turret. There is a number of ways to make this build work in your favour, and this is one of them. This is a common setup that you would see the most be used in endgame content, and just this alone makes it easier to trigger our effect more efficiently. Frost Pulse and Glacier Harvest do have their places, especially Glacier Harvest, but at the moment we need something more instant to be put in place. For the Fragments, Whisper of Durance wears slow for your abilities last longer and linger longer, Whispers of Fissures, which increases the damage and burst of Stasis Crystals and Frozen Targets. Whisper of Venting, which increases primary weapon damage against Crystals and Frozen Targets by a 43% buff. And Whisper of Torment, that grants grenade energy back to the user each time you take damage. What I had in mind was to use my ability's effects to either slow or outright freeze a target, and then use my main primary weapon to clean up with ease and less hassle. This is achievable when Whispers of Fissures, Durance and Rending is all in play, but the only one that may have issues is the Whispers of Torment and how often it procs. This one doesn't give a lot back to you, I believe about 5%, compared to the further generation fragment that is very similar, but the following just makes your life easier as it's out of the way. If you want to change it, then this is fine as Whispers of Bond, Chains, Rhyme and Shard, to a degree, can be good replacements. For the mods and stat section, both Discipline and Strength will play a big part within the build, but so will you obviously in stat. To be fair, how you go about this next section is not strictly limited as most of my builds tend to be. So, Resilience is fairly easy to get up to, and having it at tier 7 to tier 9 is what I would call a sweet spot to aim for. That extra damage reduction will give you more ample time of life, and can make running legend content a bit more easier for the user. Combine this with Whispers of Chains or Rhymes as well, and you can be both destructive and tanky in one. At tier 7 for Discipline, we'll be able to produce Stasis of Grenades at an increased rate with Font of Focus added, so you can get a tier 10 stat easily. Depending on the grenade being used, you can either use the Glacial Grenades along with Whispers of Shards for fast ability regen, or you can use the Dust for Grenades with their low cooldown rate. Grenades here won't be used as often as you see with most of my builds, but the following with Dust Fill will probably be the best choice if you intend to use your Stasis turrets quite often. This is the same for our strength stat at tier 7, as we intend to use it along with Font of Viger for a tier 10 cooldown once active. This, along with our melee, will help with triggering ice flare bolts within the build, as this here means that we can land critical hits much more effectively from distance. With how effective these Fonts mods are when getting orbs of power, I can see the two combos for status being excellent in a lot of content, including the more harder ones. For the armor charges to retain the following system we have in play, Charged Up will allow us to hold on to more armor charges as you play and collect them. Having the Connect Cypher mod for creating orbs of power via your weapons, and the Reaper mod for creating orbs of power via using your rift and then netting a kill, is a simple and practical method to rely on. At the same time, having the powerful friends and powerful attraction mod can play a huge favor in this build, just in general. And then adding on the Times 2 Connect Weapon Surge mod, and the time dilation mod means that we can become a constant orb factory as long as we net those kills with our primary. Ideally, then headshots will be the play here if you really want to bring this build up to full. Now lastly, the weapons being used will be the Ace of Spades, which is a, an unusual pick as we haven't tossed this weapon in years, but it works fantastic when paired with Chromatic Fire. The following has a lot of pros to it, which makes it amazing to use in PvP if you are skilled enough such as being able to trigger a firefly effect on defeated targets, grant you damage boost after getting a precision kill, increases reload speed after kill, and in general, it hits very hard. This is more for PvP than PvE use, but honestly, this weapon has worked out really well with this setup in mind. 
Considering the use of stasis here, this can help with taking out large groups in one shot if a well placed frozen enemy is mid target. Of course, not everyone sees his weapon being worthy for his use in PvE alone, which is fine as we have other weapons we can use. Hung Jury from doing Pacific Weekly Nightfalls is easy to get and Farm 4 for Five Light on it, while doing the King's Full Ray for a Smile Marine is another option which has fantastic perk options to select. For Heavy, I have the new Cold Comfort Rocket Launcher with Envious Assassin and Chill Clip. This is a great Heavy to use against bosses as it can apply shatter damage on top of his base damage for a huge damage buff straight out of it. My version can get up to about 2 to 3 rockets at once, which makes it perfect to use against bosses, to champions, etc. And to be fair, with how this build is set up with using all grenades as much as possible, we can do a lot of damage in a short time frame given. Of course, if you want to stick with Dragonfly or Firefly theme of the build, then the Swarm from Zavala is also a good and great and easy choice to use once in rotation. Now, Chromatic Fire has always been an exotic that you see most be used in PvP because of its simple form and nature. It doesn't provide damage buffs or increased health regen, etc. But it offers the ability for base kinetic weapons to trigger an elemental firefly effect onto its target after a critical hit. This may not seem a lot at first, but the recent buff towards this actually makes them great for ad clearing purposes. Take our example, with stasis combined into my Ace of Spades, each critical fly on a blow made will trigger a stasis slow onto a target while also triggering my weapon's firefly slash dragonfly effect. This will not only slow or freeze targets depending on if I have a secondary stasis effect active, but the secondary explosion will wipe out a group of thralls in one shot and mages and ultras nearby will be slowed. Effectively, this can make crowding up in PvP a nightmare for some if just one person doesn't get out of the way in time. In terms of PvE, it works out just how well you expect for most weapon focused builds. You've got multiple damage buffs coming for your main primary, so that even if you haven't activated your main weapon slotted trait just of yet, you'll still be able to take on enemies fairly well. And then the ability regen for both your grenades and melee are also pretty on par with each other, allowing you to easily switch back and forth and utilize your abilities well. Only downside of the build though is the lack of damage being done against shielded enemies at times. I have noticed that most enemies within a legend content for example with elemental shield will take about 4-5 to five shots to break an elemental shield when using your kinetic alone. But if you have your weapon's exotic effect active then this will take about 3 shots to break instead. Now luckily status is great against destroying those shields and making it easier to land your perfect shots, but at the same time your secondary of choice can help navigate this area. It's just, if you're on a streak with this build, it can sometimes mess up the flow of the setup and, in my opinion, I don't see it being that useful in high end game content unless you are fully prepared. This is just one example of Chromatic Fire with his new buff being in effect with stasis, but there are still many more to cover that I would like to see just how effective they can be. But what do you think? So there we have it, I hope you all enjoyed the build breakdown. If you have any thoughts on content shared, then please leave a comment below. While at the same time, if you enjoy the content and want more of these videos in the future, then leave a like and sub right here. I will leave a dim link for the build below. And if you want more stuff like this, then I have a playlist available covering all types of builds you desire. It was great sharing today's video with you all. I hope to see you again soon.